Well, continuing our series here at Balakameen, we've been talking to all different aspects of what's going on in education. Tiffany's now with us, a, a teacher um, from across. She was just something before we started. Yeah. So you've been locked down because you, you haven't been able to go back and see no. friends and relatives. Well, how's that for you as well? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite tricky. This is, you know, I lived away from university, but I could sort of go home for a weekend if I wanted to. So this is the longest I've ever been away from home. So you've um, had your own challenges on this, though? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, I live on my own, which is <laughs> quite chatty. So, so. <laughs> She's talking. <laughs> Just go slower. I thought, don't worry, I, I talk fast. <laughs> uh, what's, what's it been like, though? Tell, take us through the whole situation from the beginning you know, and how you've been able to do your job. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, the first thing I'd say is there's no competition to being a teacher in the classroom. Um, I've done days in the hub, which, you know, I've sort of been saying to Adrienne, oh, you know, get me in as much as you can, like, because that feels so much more like my job but then we've just utilized technology and it was you know very much hit the ground running we didn't have really any notice of what was about to happen um, so I teach math so we had an established online platform already so it's been less difficult maybe than some other subjects uh, and are you zooming or whatever no we were never given permission for oh. online lessons um, I think it how was do you do that just uh, yeah they email submit people. it online yeah so like I'm trying to explain like mathematical concepts like via an email or I um, assumed you were all just doing it on in no vision. we weren't ever given permission for safeguarding purposes um, oh my goodness. yeah so like that obviously would have made our lives yeah. a lot more straightforward and um, you know there's obvious reasons with safeguarding as to why video chatting students might be questionable but um, yeah because you have to have the safety thing don't you that yeah, somebody else watching and it and yeah so it, it does get complex yeah. um, but yeah so for me it's sort of been you know I've got my notebook behind you and I've got like little sort of maths problems um, <laughs> I mean I can show you. yeah it's my notebook <laughs> I've definitely got a maths problem and then what I've done is like so the example here would be just, just the pink is my ramblings. So I've sent, I've emailed a picture that I've taken of that to a student. The black is the maths, and then the pink is the ramblings that I'd normally give them in class as I'm explaining the problem. And so, that's been my best alternative. So you email individually, or do you send out a group? Um, so we set group work, and they can comment publicly as a group. But then we have like school emails. They have like an at online.sh.im yeah. and so do I so it's safeguarded approved um, and if they have a specific query related to one question they'd email me a picture of the question say oh, I'll miss some stuff on this right. and then that sort of was my solution or I'd source a video for them online because we're really lucky in maths there are people such as there's a sub site Corbett Maths so it's Mr Corbett who runs it and he hosted online lessons years and years ago like, I use them to revise my A levels <laughs> So, you know, if it was finding things like that that are already established because he has like the proper, you know, like mini tablets with the pens, right, the right. things that some teachers here did have um, and some teachers ordered themselves during lockdown, but for such, like, you know, they're not necessarily cheap equipment mm. and like I don't have a printer at mine. So it's just things like that that weren't set up. Do all the pupils do all the work? Because, I mean, that's got to be a thing, isn't it? I mean... No, if I'm going to be honest. With, like, sure. Yeah, I mean, and there's not much I could do about it. Like, I did, you know, I checked in weekly with students. Um, I did a lot of communicating with parents, and, you know, I've noticed, like, like, your students, but, like, your child is behind in work for, you know, however many weeks. Um, is everything okay? Like, you know, I'm aware... That, so, is it, I never... I think the biggest thing was to never go in with an accusatory or, like, a critical sort of tone, because... You know, I asked one of my year 10s, I tried to contact the student before the parents, if I didn't hear back from the student, then as, from a safeguarding point of view, I'd contact the parents and say, you know, they're okay. But one of my year 10s got back to me and they said that actually their grandma had died across and they couldn't go back for the funeral and they were trying to process and deal with that. And that was the thing, it was, you know, I had children who were, whose parents had tested positive for COVID, I had children who had COVID or like COVID symptoms and were then unwell and not working. So it was always just going in straight off with a, and how can I help? What's what's wrong? Yeah. And sometimes it was just sheer. I don't like maths. I'm not doing the work. <laughs> right, no, that was, that was my subject. Um, yeah, this this thing about mental health and that yeah. sort of thing. Did you have to keep an eye on people? They make sure they were doing okay. Yeah. And not so I am a form tutor. I have a year eight tutor group um, who I think if they watch this might um, end up talking to me about it. But they know that you know I absolutely love my tutor group and my role of being a tutor is one of the most sort of important things to me aside from. Teaching maths, um, and I would check in with them once a week with a specific form. We had three questions as school policy that we had to ask, which was, "How are you? How are you getting on 
your work is there anything I can do to help and then I always added on a bonus question that I changed each week so it'd be like tell me somewhere you've been in the past couple of weeks that's nice particularly because they all know that I've only moved over and I hadn't explored the island very much so I had to um, some of my students like you have to go to Eric Cushland this or you have to do this and then you know They're helping you at the same time then yeah and it was nice it was, uh, and it's that nice sort of like human side yeah. to try and get them to engage so I had like you know what's the best thing that you've watched on telly or on Netflix um, have you tried any new recipes like it, there would just be a different bonus question for them to interact with because otherwise there was a complacency if it's the same three questions every week and it'd be yes I'm fine yes I've done my work yeah. no I don't need any like help you talk to a computer or something yeah the so That's trying good. to and well done, you know like we, thank you. Um, we had groups like focus groups digitally as teachers where we compared different strategies that were working to engage students finally people can obviously slightly choose the time they want to do this work anyway if they yes. do it at all I mean you're <laughs> saying um, that you can get calls or email returns in the middle of the night yeah like you know I, I'll have responses to things that I post on so it's Google Classroom that we use um, so I posted something yesterday in regards to the return to school and I had a student reply at 3 30 this morning um, but teenagers are typically a bit more nocturnal but when they're sort of left to it almost particularly when you've got parents working from home and things like that but I know that when I was a teenager my summer holidays I ended up because naturally they do wake up later you yeah. know school gets them up in the morning but on Monday coming back to normal yeah you're looking so forward to that I can't wait oh I, honestly like I cannot wait like I feel like Honestly, it was a bit like Christmas. Like I was, because I was so apprehensive when they did mention return to school, thinking about like a quarter of a year group in a time um, of like certain year groups at a time was discussed, and like two meters apart, and like not being able to yeah. go near them. I was wondering how, because like I'm quite. I'll end up crouched next to a desk helping them with a problem. I was like, how am I going to do that if I can't get within two metres? Whereas the second they were like, no, nope, no social distancing, everyone's coming back. I was like, oh, this is amazing. I can do my job and see all the kids. And Fine. Well, all the best. And Thank in, you. Into that lens, you better talk to your pupils. Any message to oh, them? Oh, gosh. Um, when's this going out? <laughs> well, we're out pretty well soon as we can. So, yeah. OK. Um, in which case, I cannot wait to see you all. Um, I hope you're safe. If you've got overdue my mask, can you please get on to it before you come back? <laughs> Um, no, but I can't wait to see them. And that is genuine, and I think my classes will all know that that is quite genuine. They always say my face gives away what I'm thinking. Brilliant. <laughs> so you can see I'm very happy.